Hello everybody, my name is Ken and I'm here at Fahrenheit Ceramic Studio. I'm going to be showing you a little bit about how to paint this new bisque item that we got in today. It's a little, maybe not a sailboat, like kind of a little kayak canoe thing. Um, we got this in recently, we think it's really cute and apparently our customers do because we've sold a few just after a post that we made. I'm going to demonstrate a technique for uh, making a sort of wood grain look on it. Um, we, uh, we think this would be a really great planter holder. Um, we've had a, a lot of our planters selling out and um, this one holds a few. Uh, you can put some succulents in here, but um, I'm going to get to the painting right now, actually. So here we go. Let me just center this shot. I'm gonna first lay down a little bit of a warm brown here, called pumpkin pie, sort of a cafe au lait color. I did the first side in advance, just so I wouldn't have to spend forever doing this in front of you, boring you. So, ideally we would want three layers of paint going down on here. And I did three layers on the other side. I might cheat a little bit on this side, but it's this is just kind of to show you how to, how to get the point. In our last video, some of you said that we weren't quite close enough to get an idea of what was going on, but I hope that you can see what I'm doing here. Just laying down strokes horizontally The first layer here dries pretty quickly because the ceramic just sucks it up. So that's pretty satisfying to put down. At Fahrenheit, we are um, offering to-go kits. Um, you can find all the instructions for how to place your order on our Facebook page. It's pinned right at the top. Um, it's just the cost of the bisque item that you choose, and uh, the cost of the paints is one dollar per ounce of the regular colors, and the special flecked ones are two dollars per ounce. There's no limit to the amount of paint, um, so you can really go wild with this, but if you did, um, if you are watching this video and you end up liking how this technique looks, um, this, this really doesn't require much paint at all. I think it's probably going to be about two ounces that I'm using on the outside for this first uh, warm brown layer. Um, and I'm gonna put after this um, a little bit of a darker brown to achieve um, a sort of wood tone look. I don't wanna get ahead of myself here, but you'll see that when it happens. Um, but yeah, it's really not gonna be much paint to cover this at all. I'm gonna make the inside blue, but again, not to get ahead of myself here. Oh, drop a little bit on the table there. So again, we do recommend three layers for a nice rich color, but you might be able to get away with less than that. Um, just because this is going to, we want it to look a little wood grainy, so it's not, um, it's okay if a little bit of the white is showing through underneath. Um, it could actually enhance the look. Um, but you might want to do three layers anyways, because if you're doing this at home, you might want to, want to spend more time painting and less time trying to finish it up real quick. I'm almost done my second layer here. Let's get the prow done up real nice here. I'm gonna look at the top here, so a good way to handle the top is if you want it to just, the brown to just hit the top of the wall there, I just kind of pat it with my brush sideways, 
like that. Because that prevents the, uh, the bristles of the brush from accidentally going down into the interior of the boat. My bisque is a little stained here because I had to clean up a mistake that I made earlier before I started filming. So excuse my little stained bisque here. I suppose that doesn't matter so much. I don't know even if you can see it, but whatever. So I'm just gonna wait for that to dry a little bit. Maybe go on to the side a little bit more. But I think that's looking pretty good. And you can see um, as you go that the paint dries pretty quickly. Um, it doesn't need to be bone dry to handle it, but um, it's good to make sure that it's, uh, it's not wet enough that you are picking up um, old layers with the next layer that you put, uh, put down. Um, again, I put, uh, um, I've done two layers, but I'm just gonna do a third here to be absolutely certain that I like my result. I did three on the other side here. satisfying to lay down large areas of paint. It goes pretty quick. All right, so I think I'm looking, I'm liking how that looks. Let me get that all in the frame there. It's still a little shiny on this side, of course, but I'm just going to clean my brush out here. I won't need that for the moment, but I'm going to get some darker brown. Uh, this one is called Happy Trails. It's kind of like our, it's like our darkest brown. And I'm not gonna need a lot of that. Probably if you wanted to achieve this look, um, you'd be fine with just one ounce of the Happy Trails. Um, so really all we're gonna do here is just dip our sponge right there. You don't wanna overload your sponge like too much. Um, you want it to be fairly dry. Um, so we're just going to start at one end and kind of work our way. With that little bit, we're going to go over the whole thing. So I, I even had my brush like a little bit too loaded because you can see how dark it got there at the front, but it's it's gonna, it looks darker now probably than it's going to appear when it comes out of the kiln. So I've learned my lesson here. I'm gonna pat a little bit off as I go. And getting up close, you can kind of see how that leaves a bit of a wood grainy kind of appearance there. And if you don't like how it's come out in a certain spot, you can also um, you can really fix mistakes pretty easily uh, with the pottery. Let's say I, uh, for some reason, don't like what's going on over here. I'm just going to bring my sponge out a little bit. I don't want it sopping, but I can pick up some of the paint here. I'm liking how that's kind of looking. might um, take some of this brown, darker brown color off of there. I want it to get into the grooves there, so I'm going to help move it along with my, my damp sponge here. And go to the front here. So at this point, I didn't even really need to load up with more of that dark brown. It kind of picks up some of the lighter brown from underneath and uh, carries it along. So you can kind of see that it's got an aged look. I might add a little bit of brown up at the front here. So I'm just gonna sponge that on without dragging it to begin with, just so it's on there. Maybe get in the cracks real nice. And I'm 
I'm going to again uh, squeeze all the paint out of my little sponge. So I've got a clean sponge here and I'm just rubbing that, um, that dark brown along the surface. And I'm not sure exactly how well you can see what I am doing. Um, I can see on the camera what is going on, but you can kind of see here. I'll get it closer up so you can observe. It's an interesting look. Again, you can add and subtract as you please. If you've got a nice uh, three thick layers of the lighter brown underneath, you don't need to worry about it picking up that much. And um, it kind of, it doesn't really matter if it does because it's going, if you're going for uh, an aged boat look, it could, you could justify it anyway. You could say that spots of white are just a little bit of white paint. Ever making up a little story about your boat as you go. So I've got this side done and I'm going to go ahead with the other side here. Sponge off some of that brown and again I'm kind of laying it down thick at the prow here and then I am just rubbing it on like that some more here. I'm almost learning this as I go too so uh, if you don't know what you're doing that's okay because it's fun to experiment and if you find what you've done is just a total disaster you can just wipe the whole thing off. So again here we go cleaning off my sponge and I'm Rubbing that in where it didn't hit the original. So there, I don't know how well you can see that, but yeah, I did pick up a little bit too much brown there and you can see the white. I might put just a little touch more of that darker brown there to compensate for that. And I want a little bit more of this dark brown. You may want to give it like a couple minutes before you start um, using the dark brown over the light brown. The other side was pretty dry before I started going over it, but I think this is still coming out pretty nice. So I'll just sponge that on and I don't need to go wild here. This is pretty easy technique, so don't overthink it. sponge but again I, you can see I'm tapping it off I just want to have like a, like not a whole ton I don't want paint seeping over the sides of my sponge because that will uh, be difficult to work into the pattern of your little ship here your little boat Let's see how this is looking here. So this is my one side. I think I want a little bit more brown here in the center. I want a little bit of brown in the crevices. So I'm gonna lay that down and then I'm just going to drag that. side and this side and now I'm just gonna do the back here real quick And I 
think I am satisfied with how that's turning out. You can see it looks like old, old boards on this boat. I don't know if I should be calling it a boat. Is there a rule for how big a vessel has to be to be called a boat? Who knows? Somebody knows, but not me. Um, all right, so we've got the exterior of our ship done. You don't really need to paint the bottom unless you want to. Um, I'm not going to. Um, but I will paint real quick the inside here. Um, and you can paint the in inside any color you want, but I'm going to go with a uh, sort of royal blue we have here. It's called Bebop and Blue. And this can go quick. I'm not going to obsess with getting this um, three layers just because conceivably um, we'd be putting plants inside, so it doesn't need to um, be the most fussy affair because if there's going to be soil in here, no one's even going to see it anyways. We just want a little pop of color along the edges, so I am going to focus along that. And again here you can kind of see I'm not, I'm not pulling my brush, I'm sort of patting along as I go just so I don't go over the edge. I'm gonna add an extra layer at the top. But I think I'm just gonna go with this strokey appearance inside the boat. Need a little bit more of that. So again, if you do like this technique and you wanna replicate it, um, and you're doing it this way with just like a really streaky look, uh, probably you can get by with just one ounce. But if you did want to cover the whole thing and have it be a consistent and even shade of blue, I would say you should go with two ounces. And tilt that so you can see it a little bit better. And see how I'm tapping there? Just to put the paint on a little bit thicker near the edge. And then as I go down, less consideration. Approaching the end of the interior of the boat here, so that will be almost our last step here. Just need a little bit more blue here. All right, so there we've got the interior of our boat. That's a little rough, as you can see. It's not a full, even shade of blue, but that's kind of uh, what I was going for here. If I want to um, put down three even layers, uh, I can, but I'm sure you don't want to sit here and watch a, a, a two hour video of me painting this. So let's make it a little quick here. We've got the exterior of our boat, we've got a little pop of blue showing over the sides. That's really enough because if you're filling this with anything 
it's not gonna have a lot of scrutiny paid to the interior probably. So we've got the all wood looking stuff on the outside. And I always like to add a little bit of writing on my, uh, my pieces. We decided that we are going to name this boat the Grow Boat, since we intend to put some succulents inside. You don't want to know how long we were thinking of what to name this. And um, if you do like this technique and you want to replicate it and you are not much of a letterer yourself, uh, we can do it uh, for a small fee here at the studio. So uh, don't hesitate to ask us if you do want something like that. Let me try and get this in the screen a little bit better here. I don't know if you'll be seeing this backwards or if this gets turned around on Facebook. Forgive me if I'm writing backwards to here. to that R here. On the tail. Some people say I make it look easy, but it's a lot of practice behind it, so don't get discouraged if you are not um, very talented with lettering, because if you're not practicing every day, it's not something that's necessarily just going to come to you, you know? the little fancy here in front, a little smaller. All right, there we have it. So on my my camera, I'm seeing Taubwarg. I don't know if it says grow boat for you, but uh, whatever. Um, here's our boat. If you like it, just give us a call at the studio, 856-269-4931. Again, it's just the cost of the bisque items that you choose and $1 for every ounce of paint that you get. And there's no limit on that. I hope you all have a, a really good day and I hope you enjoyed watching this video.